call. Next is. Now, coming to the type of constipation. There are so many types of constipation. Number one, functional constipation. That is known as number one functional constipation. That is spastic constipation. When there is spast arises in the muscles of the bone, that is known as spastic constipation. It may, it may cause the irritable bowel stool is, in this case, there is irritable bowel stool is hard, rounded, stone like, because there is no softness, so that's why the, the stool is very hard and stone like, difficult to pass, so that is known as spastic constipation. So, choice of purgative is quite the start. You know, that is, is the first choice for the purgation or for, for the softness, uh, sorry, for the soft, softness of the screw. Fibrous dye should be taken. That is, example, tegus rod. It can be used in the spastic constipation. Aerotic constipation, when there is decrease in the movement of the intestinal muscles, that is sluggish bowel. It is known as sluggish bowel. In advanced age, requires plenty of fluid, plenty of food of fluid is required for the softness of the feces uh, uh, or the stool. This opinion should be given once or twice a week, once or twice a week. Second type of constipation, that is bedridden patient. The bedridden patient, because you know that when there is no movement automatically, all the system becomes slow, all the system becomes slow. So movement is must be there, body movement must be there. In case of bedridden patient, those patients who cannot walk, who cannot move, they are on the bed, they are known as bedridden patient. So in this patient, post-operative, but particularly the post-operative, in case of post-operative patient, myocardial infarction, stroke, fracture. In this patient, Bulk forming agents are used to, uh, uh, to overcome this problem that is the constipation. Example, lactulose and liquid paraffin. Right? Now, third is to avoid straining at school. To avoid straining at school, that is hernia, cardiovascular diseases, example, the eye surgery, files. In this condition, the feces should be soft. Because, uh, and lactulose can be given in this case, right? Now, preparation of the bowel for surgery. The bowel should be emptied for contents, for contents, or emptied of contents. Senile permitive or sena can be used. That is, I have just told you that bowel should be emptied before the surgery. So, that permitives can be given to the patient by through the anus or the rectal root. So that's why that is known as anima and that causes the evacuation of the cough before the surgery. So anti hemetics especially for the tape forms, especially for the tape forms, because particularly the, these tape forms are present in the children. So they, they are nothing but the, uh, they, they are known as tape form and anti hemetics can be used for this case or for this purpose to evacuate the stool and then the stool is uh, passed out by the children, then automatically this will form also, also excreted out. Now saline purgative may be used for or senum to flush out the bones, to flush out the bones, right? Now food drug poisoning, food drug poisoning, you have been knowing about the food drug poisoning, that is there is of the food with the drugs and they may cause the poisoning condition to derive out the unabsorbed intent poisoning material from the intestine. Only saline permitting can be used. Only saline permitting can be used. So that's the end of the purgative, enthartics, laxative, all these we have discussed in detail. Now next topic will be the anti Next topic will be the anti Okay, thank you so much for my support. Thank you and our friends. Now we are going to the next topic that is anti 
diagonal drugs. Now the previous topic was the laxative and palliative, which we have discussed in detail, and particularly the osmotic and palliatives by the process of osmosis. You know that osmosis is a process in which there is movement of the solvent particles from higher solute concentration uh, towards the, so from lower solute, solute concentration towards the higher solute concentration through a semi-permeable membrane, so that is known as osmosis. Now osmotic uh, osmotic palliatives and laxatives, cathartics we have discussed in detail already. Now today we are going to the next uh, on the next topic that is anti-diagonal drug. Now you know that diarrhea, what is diarrhea? Diarrhea is the frequent uh, passage of the pieces or the uh, uh, passage of the stool and that is known as diarrhea. Sometimes you know that diarrhea is a, it, by definition it can be known as a frequent passage of the poorly formed stool and it may be due to either the amoebic um, or bacillary dysentery. So amoebic or bacillary dysentery, when they act on the intestine or they present in the intestine due to some microorganism that is the bacteria, they cause the dysentery and the, this dysentery either it is amoebic or bacillary. So bacilli or the amoeba, they, they are responsible for the this loose motion or the frequent passage of the stool. Now today we are going to discuss the anti diarrheal drug. Now anti diarrheal drug means those drugs which are used to prevent this the frequent passage of the food or stool or the uh, that is form stool, poor reform stool. Now diarrhea is characterized by loose watery stool, sometimes with blood or mucus, sometimes with blood or mucus. Now what is the mechanism of action of anti diarrheal drugs? The mechanism of action is just like the stimuli, increases the cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. Now you know that the same procedure we have discussed in uh, the, the previous lecture that is purgative and diagnosed, that is vexative. So similarly in this case, the stimuli, there is a stimuli that increases the cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. So there is net loss of the salt and water. So there are how they uh, show their mechanism of action? They inhibit the sodium chloride absorption in the mirror cells of the intestine and increase the anion secretion in the crypt cells. Now this is the figure which shows the villous cells and the crypt cells. Villous cells and the crypt cells, this is the villous cell showing cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP. They inhibit the sodium and chloride absorption. They inhibit the sodium and chloride absorption in the intestine. That is the villous cells, whereas the crypt cells they are responsible for increase in the anion secretion. For increase in the anion secretion, this is the negative sign means the inhibition of the absorption of sodium chloride. This is the positive sign causes the increase in the anion secretion. That is the cyclic AMP is responsible. Cyclic GMP is responsible for the increased secretion of chloride and bicarbonate. That is known as anion. That is known as anion. So this is the process of the anti diarrheal drug or the mechanism of action of anti diarrheal drug. So many bacterial toxin, example cholera, enterotoxin, E. coli, aureus, salmonella, etc. These are the uh, microorganisms which are responsible for the diarrhea. They cause the activation of the enzyme adenylate inside this, which enhances the secretion after three to four hours and persist for 36 hours, persist for 36 hours. So this is due to this uh, adenylate cyclase, there is increase in the formation of the stool or the passage of the stool. Now prostaglandin and intracellular calcium ions, they also part participate, also stimulate the secretory processes excessive of bile salts and also causes diarrhea, excessive of bile salts also causes diarrhea because previously in case of laxative and palliative we have discussed the mechanism of action of bile salts. So in this case the excessive of bile salts causes the diarrhea. By activating the enzyme adenylate cyclase there is hypermotility of the gut. Now adenylate cyclase that is the hypermotility of the gut this is the, this is the mechanism of the 
increase passage or the passage of the poor stool or the feces. So that that is the mechanism. That is first there is decreased absorption of sodium and chloride. Second, there is increase in the anion and anionic concentration. Due to the action of these bacteria, they cause the increase in the adenylate cyclase, and this adenylate cyclase then causes the increase in the prostaglandins, increase in the formation of this poor uh, stool and passage of the stool. There is prostaglandins and intracellular calcium ions also stimulate the secretory processes. Excessive of biosolid also causes the diarrhea. By activating adenylate cyclase, and this is the hyper there is hypermotility of the gut and decreased segmentation of the intestine decreased segmentation of the intestine now treatment of diarrhea now in this previous slide we have discussed that how the diarrhea takes place now you know that the diarrhea takes place due to the condition that is due to the action of the two cells that is the pillar cells and the grip uh, cells the crypto cells and the villus cells they are responsible for the diarrhea when, when bacteria or microorganisms act upon that then there is imbalance in between the electrolytes and the water so that may cause the diarrhea now coming to the anti treatment of the diarrhea that is anti diarrheal drugs <coughs> anti diarrheal drugs now anti diarrheal drugs that is treatment of the fluid depletion first of all we have to treat the fluid depletion because whenever there is diarrhea there is excessive excretion of the fluid from the body and it may cause a dehydration it may cause a dehydration so first of all the treatment of fluid depletion maintenance of the nutrition because whenever there is loose stool passage of a loose stool or the diarrheal condition there is the weakness the patient feel weakness due to the Decreased absorption of the food components because the food remains for a very short period of time in the intestine and it is expelled out as soon uh, as early as possible due to the extra bacterial action. So that may cause the weakness of the body. So therefore, maintenance of the nutrition is most important. And next is the last is the drug therapy. Last is the drug therapy means the drugs which are used to control this diarrheal condition. That is known as drug therapy. Now, first of all, rehydration. How we treat the depletion, fluid, depletion of the fluid? That is known as the process of rehydration. It, it can, it can uh, done orally or intravenously. Now, orally or intravenously, either the patient should take plenty of the liquid or the fluid, or there must be intravenous infusion. So drip that is intravenous infusion. So intravenous rehydration, it is needed when fluid loss is severe. Now normally the fluid loss can be treated by orally taking the fluid and when there is excessive fluid loss, the dehydration is severe. So then automatically there must be intravenous infusion should be given to the patient. So intravenous rehydration, it is known as intravenous rehydration. It is needed when fluid loss is severe, that is said more than 10%, more than 10% body weight. If not connected, leads to shock and death. So be careful about this point that the rehydration process must be treated immediately as it is appeared. Because the rehydration is that condition if it is not treated, it becomes prolonged, it causes the, uh, the excretion of all the body fluids and, and when there is severe condition arises, it may cause the shock and the death of the patient. Now, for this rehydration, there is recommendation of the composition of the intravenous fluid by World Health Organization. The World Health Organization has given a formula for the process of or the, for the treatment of fluid dehydration that is known as recommended composition of intravenous fluid or infusion. In that infusion, the sodium chloride must be present as 85 millimoles, that is 5 gram, potassium chloride 30 millimoles, that is 1 gram, sodium bicarbonate 48 millimoles, that is 4 grams. 
they all are dissolved in a water to make the volume of the one liter. To make the volume of the one liter, and in this case, again, five percent dextrose is also added. Five percent dextrose is also added to this. That is, in one liter of water, the or five percent dextrose or five percent. It means that either you have to dissolve these com com compounds, these salt compounds. In the one liter of water, that is one liter of water, or you have to dissolve this electric com uh, chemical compounds in five percent dextrose. What do you mean by five percent dextrose? Five percent dextrose means that five gram of the dextrose dissolved in one hundred uh, ml of the water. Now. Its volume equivalent to 10 percent body weight in fused two to four hours. That is, infusion must be in two to four hours. Two to four hours requires for the infusion of this one liter of this components of the solution. Oral rehydration. Now, what is oral rehydration? Causes increase in the absorption of sodium. General principles should be isotonic. Isotonic having the same concentration to that of the Should be isotonic. Total osmolarity. Again, osmolarity that is 200 to 310 mg of moles per liter. That is known as isotonic with the plasma of the blood, right? So, isotonic solution should be given to the patient. Second molar ratio of the glucose should be equal or to some extent higher than the sodium, but not exceeds 110 mg moles. But not exceed 110 mg moles, right? Now, next C is potassium, 15-25 millimoles, and bicarbonate or the citrate, that is, the 3 to 10 millimoles should be provided. Should be, oh sorry, 8 to 10 millimoles should be provided. Now, WHO recommended recommendation of World Health Organization. The World Health Organization recommended sodium 90 millimoles, potassium 20 millimoles, chloride 80 millimoles, citrate. As it is 10 millimoles, glucose 110 millimoles. Total osmolarity 310 mg osmoles per liter. 310 mg osmoles per liter.